back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl, Damalisha, and we wet, we back at it again. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, come on in and grab a seat. However, if you're already certified babe, then you already know how we can give it up over here. I took a nice little break off, nice little two days off, a little bit day vibes. And I did vlog it, so you guys will be seeing that video. You probably will see that video before you see this one. So if you wanna catch up, catch up here, because I definitely will link it. Um, I wanted to just go ahead and get on with the show, okay? Like, go ahead and get on with the content, because you guys did request a couple videos from me, and I always, like try to get your content out when you ask me for things or when you tell me that there are particular topics that you want to hear about. So with that being said, we're coming in hot <laughs> in February with the top five books that have changed my life. So boom, let's just go ahead and start with The Alchemist, okay? The Alchemist is the first book that I read in this list of five. And I read it about, some people outside are doing some construction, so if you hear the noise, that's what that is. It is not happening in your home. Rest assured, no one is trying to break in. So, The Alchemist is the first book that I've read out of this list of five. And it was absolutely life changing for me. I, I think I read this book maybe in 2014, 2015-ish. Um, and it started out super slow. It is a novel, it's by uh, Paulo Coho, I think his name is. Um, and I had put it down a couple times. And I was like, I don't really, I'm not into this book. I was reading on my Kindle, my Kindle app on my phone. And I would be using the train during this period of time because I was working downtown. And so on my commutes, I would try to read it. And then one day it just got really loud and it got really good for me. And it stuck. And it's a novel. And it basically tells you about the journey of a boy who is a shepherd boy. He minds sheep. He ends up having a dream about something and believes in it and he wants something bigger. His idea of things doesn't really go over well with his family and his kinfolk during that period of time, but he believes it in any way. He packs his rags and he goes on a journey. And while he's on that journey, he really sees that God conspires for his highest good in, in every way. It talks about him falling in love, you know. Um, it talks about him uh, losing um, because he's taking risks. It talks about him uh, becoming kind of uh, almost desperate as if he's lost and he won't be able to find himself. It talks about him finding ways that he was able to redeem himself and put himself in a better situation. At one point in the book, he loses all of his money due to a risk, due to him not paying attention. And he finds an, a way to earn money and he keeps going on this journey and he finds ways to improve himself and really, you know, realize what he's been dreaming about and for me the message was just kind of like God is always present in everything that we do and the message for me was it's like God is always in conspiracy with you and it's always for your highest good your creator always wants the best and the best and the best the creme de la creme for you okay and that book really did it for me um so that's coming you know at number one because that's the first book i read and, it, and i think about that book often whenever i get discouraged or i'm not really sure i remember that that little boy in that book he didn't know what was going on it wasn't no cell phones wasn't no social media wasn't no keep going messages out there it was just him and god and he was on his way doing what he needed to do and i find that to be the highest inspiration of all. So this next book is definitely a banger. Another banger. Like this one is like a banger because it has everything to do with truly just understanding the rules of life and I really subscribe to this to being the rules of life and it's the four agreements. The four agreements just basically put a nice little blueprint in there for you to stand ten toes down and not get too wrapped up in what everybody else got going. It gives you four agreements to make with yourself for your own personal achievements and your own personal understandings while you journey throughout this life. And honestly, like, no funny business. I couldn't deviate from these four agreements if I wanted to in terms of them actually being meaningful and them actually being useful in life. Like, my favorite one is don't take anything personal. 
because that's a really big one. I think throughout life, you know, I had been going through a lot of different things and I've gone through a lot of different things and I looked at it like, oh, they, they're they trying to hurt me. They're trying to do this, that, and the third to me. They're this, that, and the third. They're not good people. And, you know, all these different excuses that you come up with to villainize other people and to you know victimize yourself and I realized that I was giving out a lot of power doing that and after I read the book I realized like this hold on a second this ain't even personal them people doing what they feel like they got to do according to their understanding and according to their perspective and if they feel like they got to be nasty and they got to do nasty things and they got to do things to you that they wouldn't want done to them that is their own understanding of the world and they're probably battling their own demons it's not because you're a bad person and you deserve it and they want to particularly hurt you that is just how they feel about themselves and it's reflected it's all a projection so that was my favorite agreement but the four agreements in total are um and I know they're going to be out of order but I know it's always be impeccable it's be impeccable with your word um don't take anything personal always do your best and never make assumptions and I think that those four agreements are like solid they solid like I I have never been able to find a fallacy with those and that's why that book changed my life because applying those helped me to be uh, a well-rounded person and it helped me to not be all up in the clouds and what everybody else got going on because what other people do really don't have anything to do with you but the things you have control over control them. you feel me but if you don't have control then you don't have control and that's that you do your best you don't make assumptions, you ask when you don't know. Um, you don't take things personal because people got their own crap going on. And when you say something, you mean it and you do it. And yeah, I feel like that's hard body. <laughs> um, number three is um, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck by I think Mark Rant Ronson. Ranson? Hold on. Let me get let me get the actual um, Mark Manson is his name that book was so good he basically is just like the book is about how you don't need again again how you don't need to worry so much about what is this and what is that and all these little different nuances you just need to go out there kick ass and mean it you know what I mean and the book is really really good because I think he's Australian but when he's talking to you especially audiobook because that's how I consume this book but when he's talking to you it's like very matter of fact like you you being a big whiny like about this that and the third just get out here and get on your job and do what you need to do focus on what it is that means something to you and zero in on that everything else don't matter and I feel like when you have books that are kicking into you straight like that it's highly meaningful because you're able to really get it it's able to like rest in your mind in a way where you can apply it and that book was very meaningful, meaningful for me because sometimes you just need a kick in the ass from somebody who don't know you. And that book, I felt like that's what that book did for me. Like, all right, look, girl, like you got to do this, that, a third. What you got going on? This is what it needs to be, you know? Um, so that's also another reason why I like to consume audiobooks. But that that is a book that comes in at number three. So this one is a book that's actually pretty popular amongst the people. And I feel like all of these books are pretty popular. But, you know, I'm just giving my own... Um, synopsis and how I feel and why they meant something to me but this one is uh you're a badass by Jen Jen Sincero yes I'm because I'm not gonna watch your name sis I got you but whatever the case might be um this book is really really good because she is um giving you a book that's basically saying like you a badass like you got everything you need to get what you need to do it's no reason why you should be finding ways to procrastinate or finding ways to talk yourself out of that abundance and she's really good at the way that she communicates this it's a woman's perspective conversely from mark manson but with that sass it's i think she might be italian i'm not really sure but how she presents it to you is very sassy very quick-witted very much so live girl and i really like her, her tone of voice and I like the way that the book is written and the tone that it's written in. It also goes into um, the psyche and you know the psychology a little bit about why people uh, trick themselves out of their abundance and she attacks each thing with wit and with humor and 
Baby, if you're looking for self-help book, I would definitely recommend that one. That one is a specialty in my house. I even have uh, You're a Badass at Making Money as well, and that's the next book that I'm embarking on. So number five is one of my favorites because it's by Maya Angelou. Um, Maya Angelou is, has always been my auntie in my head. May her soul thrive in peace. But Maya Angelou is one of my favorite people because she wasn't perfect. I know a lot of the times we you know, consume this information. We don't know very much about their lives. and We don't know very much about what they've had to overcome or what they've gone through or any of that stuff and so sometimes it's hard for us to really take what they got going on and apply it to our lives because we feel like yeah but your life is different or yeah but this didn't happen to you and I'm struggling with this and I hear you but it's not really landing or resonating because I don't feel seen and for me personally my Angelo really was that girl for a variety of reasons and the main reason being that she wasn't perfect and she never tried to be. Uh, so this book is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. And this is basically a biography, autobiography by her. And she's basically taking you through the different things that she's gone through as a black lady in America. From when she was small and how she was sexually assaulted, how she became a mute at one point because she thought her words harmed people, how she ended up uh, being a victim of domestic violence. And then, you know, her mom removing her from that situation. Um, you know, all of these different things. How she was a prostitute and she turned her life around. And she ended up being Maya Angelou. Do you understand? And I feel like for me, the book isn't a self-help book. But the book really showed me that it doesn't matter who you were and when you were what you were. It's always an opportunity to revise, revisit, reinvent. And I love that. And I love that. Um, so that's number five. Um, I know why the case first things. I do have more books that I enjoy, but I wanted to go ahead and share those top five with you guys because they're so many meaningful to me. And I know that they could possibly change something for you or enhance or inspire you in some way, shape, or form. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to giving you more content that you guys love. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! In the interim, I just want to let you guys know that I am currently working on All About Love by Bell Hooks. This book is over here. It's very hard for me to finish because I want to make sure that I'm digesting it in the way that it needs to be digested because the book is heavy. It's good, okay? I'm also working on Communion by Bell Hooks. I know it's psycho behavior to work on two different books at one time, but... Maybe I'm just psycho like that. Whatever the case might be, I will be back to tell you guys about these books if you guys are at all interested. They are about the feminist movement, um, love um, as applicable to women and men and children, um, and just the overall female journey of finding love, being loved, and you know receiving love as well, and why it is so meaningful in this life for humans and for sophisticated beings. Um, so yeah. And when I say sophisticated beings, I'm talking about humans, okay? I'm not talking about, I'm sophisticated. I'm talking about humans at large. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys are all well. Um, you should be viewing this video in February, so with that being said, happy February.